Hey guys, what's going on? I think we're live. All right. Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Tuvas, and welcome back to another DCS World live stream. In today's live stream, I thought I'd do some Wizzle work, except it's going to be a little bit different from what most people would think involves being a Wizzle is all about. Today, I was going to do a little bit of solo Wizzle work. What does that mean? Basically, I'm not going to climb into some random person's Wizzle suit. I'm going to climb into my own and do everything from the back seat. No front pilot whatsoever. Now, that said, that means I cannot use air to air weapons unless I'm in the front seat, and also I can't do things like uh, raise landing gear and other similar tasks that are needed for the front seat, as well as startup. So I'm going to take care of those when necessary, but I'm going to primarily fly from the rear seat. Parmesan, welcome. Intrepid Phantom, welcome. Night's going well so far. I was able to eat dinner not too long ago, so it's a nice and ripe time to start streaming for a little bit. Not going to be for too long. Also, it, I just realized this, but apparently the server is going to restart in about 20 minutes, 20 minutes or so. Uh, so we'll just use this opportunity to take off and do what we can, even though it's not going to be much. At the very least, this will be a nice... Uh, yeah, there's the notification there on the top right. The uh, server's restarting. But it's all good. It's all good. We use this as an opportunity, like I said, to practice our startup procedure. Takeoff and crashing if things go the way they normally do. Alright. Lights on. Mic on, mode A. Radar standby. JTIDs to norm. Now through a standby, even though I'm not going to use it. Just good practice. Uh, now I need the air on. Auto. Canopy locked. Lights on, even though it's not necessary in the daytime, but that's okay. How are y'all doing tonight? Glad you were able to stop by and say hi. I'm going to set up these programs, even though I'm not going to use them. Start the left engine while I do that. And for those unaware, I am indeed using an Xbox controller for all of this. That means no mouse, no keyboard, no joystick, no throttle. Everything has been controlled via the gamepad. Go to ground. <laughs> it just comes down to the good old PP. Patience and practice. If you have the patience to keep on practicing, then you'll be able to do it one day. I just have the luxury of having spent very, very many hours on this game. Too many hours on this game. Actually, I don't want that. I want TSD and then that. And then air to air, air to ground, and program, program, program. Start left engine, climb in the back seats. You know, I just realized, I don't know if I have my binding set up for the radios. I'll have to double check that. ICS, RWR, countermeasures, semi-auto, injection seats, stand by that. Mic. Backup ADI, not that it's really all that useful. Armaments, air to ground, radar, T-pod, and TSD. All right. Day's been good. Day's been good. It was a long day of work. Signed off at about 6 p.m., so about three hours ago. <coughs> then, what else did I do? 
Well, like I said, had dinner, chilled for a bit, walked the dog. Uh, I did catch some people, uh, some people streaming their gameplay sessions of Flying the Strike Eagle. I helped them out. They had some questions, so I answered them, answered what I knew. And got them on the right track. I even got someone set up with a controller as well because they want to do the Wizzo seat. And they didn't want to set up their, their HOTAS because it wasn't all plugged in. So I said, hey, just plug in your controller and you can do the Wizzo seat just fine. Especially if someone else is flying. Alright, let's get the GCN line going. You see no taxi. Let's go park and brake on. Okay. Those are set. Oh, that was fun, though. It was cool to see uh, Revy's reaction. His name's Revy. Uh, to realizing just how good an Xbox controller can be for the backup seats. So, whether it's the Wizzle seat in the F-15E, the CPG seat, and AH-64D Apache, it is the perfect option for those who have nothing else to do but do stuff in the back seat or front seat and not worry about flying. You know, I probably could have done uh, stored heading, but it's okay. Not like the server is going to be alive for much longer. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think I messed that one up. Good thing I checked. Oh, you know what? I can't do that. Not until this thing finishes. Oh, and of course it says GC hold. So, let's go ahead and go off and on. I'll do stored heading this time. Oh, it's a lot faster. Strike target list. <laughs> hey, check out that first one. Tuvas's Gamepad Emporium. We should hit that. Stop by with a Huey, grab some supplies, and take off. Come on, stored heading. Okay, while well, that's going, let's double check things back here. We've got charging pod, standby, let's turn that on. Laser, on. ICS is, the EW system is on. Volume knobs don't really matter right now. My microphone is on. Lights, oxygen, countermeasures. Uh, this guy is on, but let's go to the digits and not the presets. Oh, right, let's do this. Uh, actually, we have to do that after we get a rearm. I think that you're telling me it's be updated on how these Yeah, the, the problem is the, the names of these controls change, and I can't keep up with the changing of the names because I could do a video now. And then next update, it's going to change again. Um, but the whole idea... The whole idea behind that video is to teach you how to use the binding page. And then from there, you can use my layouts to try and search for the bindings you need. And the binding names that I used for my layouts are intentionally vague. They use part of the word that's more than likely going to be there forever. So for example... Uh, if something's like TDC, slew, horizontal, and vertical, I only say TDC. Because it's probably always going to be called that. Or if I use the word slew, it's probably always going to be called that. But yeah, there, there's no way I can publish a video every single time labels get updated. Because those are so easy to, for ED to update. And it takes so long for me to, to create a tutorial video for something like that. Okay, start heading okay. Go to nav. Okay. 
Now let's fix our weapons. This needs to be times two GBU tens. What the heck? Okay, what's going on? Bombs times ten. Uh, GBU ten. There we go. I don't know what's going on with that. Well, yeah, sorry to hear that. I mean, hopefully you were able to figure it out, though. At the very least, you probably at least learned how to use the Adjust Controls page. Air altimeter on. Menu. Low altitude warning off. We'll leave the flaps up for takeoff because, oh, actually no, we'll, we'll bring them down. Let's set uh, takeoff trim. Alrighty. Oh, and there's the bombs on the plane, just felt that one. And I guess active runway is left to right. Look at that cool guy with his canopy open. Oh, and he has the anti-runway bombs, too. Plus clusters. Interesting. Interesting choice. Alright, let's go. Ground crew, wheel chocks, remove. Remove the wheel chocks. Copy. Wheel chocks are now removed. Hmm. Everything in, everything in Steam changed. Were you following my most recent uh, tutorial for Steam? It's called something like how to unlock your gamepad for DCS or something. Something along those lines. Because I can't imagine that changing very much because, I mean, I literally use the controls page. The controller configurator, like, today. As far as I can tell, it was the same. All right, so let's try taking off from the rear seat. Let's see how that goes. HUD, cam. Why is the teapot still on? Oh, right, because... Because I technically rearmed it. That's okay. Here to ground, step, 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 step. GB-10B. GB24, menu, air to ground, GB10s, auto, step, nose, tail, profile 2, GB24, auto, step, nose, tail. And we'll go to program 1. Alrighty. I think we can start rolling. Okay, I see. So you were able to get it working, uh, but had to struggle a little bit. So can you give me an example of what was off about it? So I know what to investigate. Because uh, all the major, like, was it minor placements of things? Like maybe a, a button option was not where it, I said it would be, but it would still existed. Just in different spots. Things like that. Better to put that here. Then we can put the teapot here for now. Server is restarting in about seven more minutes. We'll be able to take off and get on route and then restart. 
Ah, oh, boy. Alright, let's hold short. Oh, hold short of a runway. Make sure no one is trying to take off. We are good. Okay, got it. So I think the best thing for me to do then is I'll just go through the video step by step and see what all has changed exactly. Because I did update it for the new UI, but I guess the new UI was changed further since the, its initial conception. Alright, eyes on the screen. 80 knots, 100 knots, 120, 140, 60, 180, pull back, front seat so I can raise that gear, raise the flaps, back seat. Okay, cool. There you have it. Barely enough time to just get in the air. Switch this guy back to the HUD. This guy back to targeting pod. This guy back to TSD. Before we forget, one, six, eight, eight. Set that there. Hop back in the front seat. Lights off. Master arm on. Radar on. And I think at this point we could stay in the back seat. Take control of that radar. Take control of that TGP. I didn't realize you could take control of the TSD. What can you do there? Nothing, apparently. Okay, whatever. Control of the radar. And we'll fly off to waypoint one. Oh, actually, I do need to be in the front seat to switch to air to ground mode. There we go. Okay. And let's go autopilot steer point mode. That'll fly for us. And we can already see some smoke out there, but usually that stuff isn't really, like, target-related. That's probably just fires out in the distance for aesthetics. I remember, right, there was a button for that. It's like... Yeah, there we go. What does this do? I don't know what that does. I don't know what that does. I don't know what that was. Okay, so apparently castle switches don't do much. Or the targeting pod, at least. I'll have to double check what they do. Teapot is freaking out. Looks funky. It's like jumping around. Designate. And let's set this to steer point too, because I know there's usually bad stuff out there. Not that we're going to get there in time anyways. We're f currently flying about... Oh, we're pretty slow actually. Let's speed it up. I don't know what I'm talking about, but some of the selections were removed. For example, where you have to select joystick mode in Steam, you had the option, and for me, it only said joystick mouse. Joystick mode. Joystick mode. When you say joystick mode, do you mean like just the normal thumbstick instead of joystick mouse? So, like, if you still wanted just normal joystick, so when you hold down left bumper and it's still a normal joystick, it would be that. Because joystick is the default selection. Maybe maybe because it was simply called joystick instead of joystick mode, it was, that's what was different? Okay, got it. 
So the, again, the labels. <laughs> it sounds like it's the same setting. It's just called something different now. Ugh. Okay. We'll have to figure that one out. Oh, going a little fast. We're about to break mock. And a climb, Jesus. And server is restarting in about one more minute. So we'll have to make sure to rejoin once that happens. Hopefully it reconnects us right away, but we'll see. Okay, looks like I already have my microphone set up. That's good. Actually, I wonder if you guys can even hear this. Com check, 249.5. Oh, you know what? I think I know. No, I have that turned up. Hmm, strange. I'm connected. Yeti microphone is set to that. High definition speaker is set to that. So there's no reason for them to not be able to talk to me. These guys. They're haters. That's all it is. They just don't. Oh, and servers are starting anyway, so whatever. Come on, reconnect automatically. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, don't be evening. Thank God it is afternoon. I mean, I guess that would be one way to get me to use the nav flare. But I don't feel like it. All right, time to go through the process one more time. Rearm. I'm just going to use my mouse. It's faster this way. Fuel tank. Fuel tank. Aim 9M. Aim 9M. Left CFT is... Actually, you know what? Let's go times 4 GB12s. Oh, in fact, I know how to alter this a little bit. And then for this one, we'll go... Let's see. If we're going to hit a couple bill... Oh. Ooh. You know what? Hmm. <laughs> I'm debating. Definitely want... The targeting pot and nav flare. Because if I put... I kind of want to do this. Oh, but should I? Okay, you know what? I have an idea. So we'll do center line. Center line will be fuel tank. Outboard. Or outboard pylons, or wing pylons, I should say, are either going to be GBUs or Mark 84. It's good. I'm debating. Because if I do this, it's going to get rid of my air to air missiles. Oh, it's not like I'm going to be able to use them anyway, so whatever. Okay, cool. That That's fine with me. If we see something headed our way, we have to turn tail and run because we cannot deal with it. Um, in fact, let's go triple. GB24s and not worry about fuel at all because we have conformals. Go figure, right? We'll rock this loadout. That'll do. Jesus Christ. <laughs> all these all these strike eagles starting their engines right next to me. Let's close that. Much better. Close that. Shut those. Starter on. Pull the pull tab. Lights. Conformal. Sorry, not. Yeah, conformal tank off. And start right engine. Environment control system. Position. Sorry, uh. Anti-collision, position lights, formation lights. Terrain following radar, not that we need it. Standby radar. Microphone, mode A. ATIDs for data link, not that it matters because it's not implemented. 
Nav flare up. Not again, not that it matters because it's daytime. Right engine start, or right engine idle. And I guess we could set that to store and see how that goes. Get those going. Is there an air threat? Oh no, the cloud layer! Ah. Oh. That is a low and thick cloud layer. Jesus. Ah, oh, man. I don't want to do the cheap thing and laze through clouds. <sighs> also, okay, that's fine. Do that and that. PP? What do you mean you need the PP? The PP's right here. Ah, uh, okay, fine. Shift north. Four five, oh two six one five. Shift east zero, three nine, oh nine, one five zero. There. Why are you still saying hold? Is it because you think the? Oh, you probably need the parking brake. Yep, time to use the air to ground radar for sure. I mean, I don't mind using it. It's just I was... I had a plan... PP required! Okay, hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's go to GC. PP required. Fantastic. It's gonna do it based off of this, because I know it's already correct. Five, four, five, zero, two, six, one, five. Okay. It says GC no taxi, which is fine. Let's, in fact, just do start heading again. And then do this again, north, 4502615. Really? Shift east, 0390901150. I guess there's no stored heading on this. Uh, it's kind of annoying. Okay, you know what? Shift north four five O two six one five. There. GC no taxi, that's all I wanna see. We'll just have to wait a while. How's it going, Bobby? Welcome to the stream. Let's start left engine. Turn on that taxi light. Auto inlet ramps. Uh, mic is on, mode A. I think everything is now on in the front seat that we care about. Let's get our screens programmed. What the hell was that? Did... Did you just... What the hell was that? Someone... Did someone explode on the runway? What the hell happened there? Well, did we take any damage? I think we're fine. I mean, this thing has taken harder hits before. We'll roll with it and deal with the issues later. Okay. What the hell is going- Oh, you know what it is? Oh, I think I know what's happening. Oh, is that what's happening? Planes are spawning on each other? Nah.
Jeez Louise. People are saying planes are spawning in each other. Other people are saying people are getting bombed. All I know is the mission designer for Huggett needs to get their stuff together. But yeah, my, my crew's dead. What the heck, dude? Um, let's see. But if I were to go for one of these late groups, like this guy, let's see what happens. Okay, well out of the way, no one next to me. This looks promising. Let's try that again. Rearm refuel. BB-24. BB-24. GB-24. GB-10. Wait, no. GB-12. Wait. No, 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 no. Because we have a cloud layer, we're gonna have to do this with iron bombs. Which makes it more fun, more challenging, that's for sure. Um, Mark 84. Mark 84. Mark 84. Just to have them. This way I can also keep missiles on me. Not that I'm going to be able to use them. Actually, you know what? I'm, I just hit cancel. I was about to say, I can't use the missiles anyways, so I'll just not bother with them. Because I'm going to be doing everything from the rear seat. But then again, I've never tried. I wonder if there's a bug that'll let me use these things. I'm going to put them on just in case. I've never actually tried using them. I shouldn't be able to use them. That doesn't mean I can't. There could be a bug. But let's give that a little shot. Okay, Red CFT. This will be times two Mark 84s. Times Jesus. Not gonna lie, that kinda scared me. Alright. I didn't like my eardrums anyways. Joke's on you. I was planning on getting those removed anyways. How do you be able to join Hoggett? You need the password, which is can be found on the reddit.com slash r slash Hoggett webpage. It'll be in the info section on the right hand side of the subreddit. Alternatively, the password is just Hoggett1FW, all lowercase. All one word. Oh, good point, Bobby. That is an excellent point. That's the case. Let's go. Times... Wait, can I do times six? No, I can only do times three. Because times six will remove this iron bomb. And I don't want to do that. Let's go times three, times three. Then times three. Request Thank you very much for the idea, Bobby. Uh, lights, cast, informals off, formation, position, not that that matters, let's get that off for now, microphone on, mode on, there, did I not start this? Let's hit it again, just in case. There we go. Hit that, hit that, hit that, that, and that. There we go. All right. It may also be full. It's a very popular server, so if it is full, you'll have to wait your turn for a slot. Now let's go in the back seat. Backup ADI, not that it really matters that much. Oxygen, lights. CS, RWR, countermeasures. Targeting pod laser on. E dubs. Mic. 
screens online. Audio online. Go TSD armament. Air to ground radar. Teapod. One six eight eight. Not that it matters because we don't have any GPUs. Back to the front seat. Start left engine. We'll configure air to air, air to ground. Again, not that it matters because we're not doing the front seat today. Armament to use teapod to air, air to ground. I'm a little upset that you can't set up programs and scroll through them in the back seat. I mean, you could set up the programs, but you can't scroll through them, which defeats the purpose of setting up programs. Um, TSD and twos. SD twos. Then left engine start. Brakes on. Now let's see if stored. Oh my god, the fire. Let's see if uh, stored heading works this time. Hell yeah, dude. Yep, that is some sad times. Which is strange, you would think it's relatively easy to do, especially when it mentions how to do it at the bottom of the kneeboard. To change laser codes, left shift, left alt, and 1, 2, 3, and 4. But unfortunately, that is apparently a work in progress. Alright, engines online. Conformals back on. Uh... You know what? I'm just going to turn the radar on. I don't want to deal with that after takeoff. Lights are set. ECS is on. Oxygen on. Parker brake on. Store it. Mm. Stored heading hold. Be fine. We'll just go to GC. PP. Be fine. 4502. 542. 39. No wait. 959960, nine, nine, close enough. So these are accurate, but it's still asking. <laughs> okay, that's fine. 4502542. Enter. Really? Shift east to zero. I wonder if it was a bug. Like, secretly, it was actually zeros in the background, but it was showing me some digits, anyways, despite that. 3908. 960. There. GC no taxi. That's what I want. Always interesting to see the difference between people's startup checklists. Yeah, for sure. I always, uh, whenever I watch people's streams and see their startup checklist, uh, I die a little bit inside when all they do is do left windows home. <laughs> I personally love starting up my aircraft. The only time I don't is if I need to go take care of something, and I just wanted to do it while I'm, like, getting water or walking the dog or something, depending on the aircraft. Speaking of which, I need to drink some water. <sighs> okay. But, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Startup is, indeed, among the most fun things you could do in DCS. Knocking out checklists, setting up our data, turning off our low altitude warning system because those are for chumps, entering the steer point we want to go to because we already know what target we want to hit that's nearby. Actually, will I be able to recognize it from the air? <laughs> Guess I'll find out. Ooh, what is the, um, I just realized, what is the wind speed on the server. Three meters? That's not too bad. Wait, three meters? That's like nine, ten mi uh, miles an hour? Knots? Mm. I might have to do a... I might have to do a bomb toss. I've never tried those before. I guess we can experiment. Bug so often for me. Do not rearm and don't jump in the back seat before GC. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for the tip. I will wait for this guy to count down all the way before I head back there. Even turn on your radar altimeter in this bird, or just stick to bear? Uh, I do actually turn on the radar, uh, radar altimeter. 
um, but only because it's there and it makes me want to flip it on to the on position. But as far as like using it, using it, eh. I mean, sure, I turn off my low altitude warning, but I do like to see my my radar altitude here on the uh, on the HUD, just in case there happens to be a mountain underneath me. Oh, before I forget, let's change our. Well, I mean, it's not like I'm even using this anyways. We'll change it to C6. 1688 is already set. Good. And this line has always been degraded for me whenever I have the Wizzo jump and prior to completing alignment, so I end up having to have... A yeah. I've noticed that as well. For whatever reason, the like, this thing counts all the way down to, like, the, the final digits to where it would switch over to GC OK, but then it goes to GC hold instead. And that's always happens to me whenever there's like a human Wizzo in the backseat. If there is no human Wizzo in the backseat, then the GC alignment goes straight to OK instead of back to like GC hold, which should only happen if your parking brake isn't on. So if your parking brake is on, it should not say GC hold. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But that also implies you come in for a landing and don't get shot down <laughs> during your mission and have to respawn. <laughs> the good old growling sidewinder tactic. It's faster. <laughs> Respawning is a faster RTB. Okay, did our ground crew rearm us? Yes, they did. Now, before I forget, let's set this to 133. Turn up our radio. Go options. Turn up helmet audio so we can hear that better. This bombardment of bra calls. GC no taxi. What? Sorry, hold on. Hear that? EGI. GC no taxi. That's what it tells me when it's in the, like, hasn't even started the alignment process. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I'm going crazy. You know what? Give me the PP required, thank you. Shift north. Four five zero oh, two five four two. Please work. Okay, we're gonna leave it at that. That gave it the PP for north, and it already had a PP for east. So stop asking me for PP. Okay, let's see how this goes. Stored heading, in theory, is faster than GC, assuming it works. I mean, it's another shot. Oh, nav is selected before aligning? Yeah, sure, we could do that. How are these guys getting in the air? Are they going up without INS alignment? Like, you. How'd you get up there? I bet you didn't even align. You're just going old school. Mark one eyeball. Chart maps. Busting out the folded pamphlet. That's like an outdated map of the world. You're trying to eyeball it from there, aren't you? I'm not jealous. You're jealous. You wish you were me. Aligning. Waiting for alignment. I really want to go in the backseat, but I don't want to ruin this. Oh, also, before I forget, because this thing is going to mess up, I need to confine to window, because otherwise my cursor is going to go off screen and then make me 
tab out of the game by accident. <sighs> I'm sure it is. <laughs> I think this thing, this waiting process takes like a whole minute for it to go from no taxi to the next step. What is that? Off east? Does that mean... Stand by. I hope that doesn't mean... I, I hope this and this do not correlate to this and this. I don't think they do. I think N is like distance to the next waypoint and E is something else. But still. The... The coincidence between this and this, and this and this, is uh, a little concerning. Sometimes I get this thing set up in less than a minute, but there are times- Yeah, dude, tell me about it. I need- I need a little bit music. I need a little bit of music. Let's get the music going. It's just gonna be the same song that you've listened to in the intro. It's nice and relaxing. Because that's what we need right now. We need to be relaxed. We need sounds of relaxation. Uh, that is indeed much better. I am, I am now enjoying myself. This is very nice. Okay, I swear to god. <laughs> okay, so it says GC no taxi. It's fine. Leave it at that. I'm just gonna not divert from the original plan. Let's just go GC no taxi and hope that does what we want. I'll leave it there. I'm not going to touch my controller. I'm not going to touch my mouse. I'm not going to touch anything. I'm just going to talk to you guys. How's it going, Starfinder Till Victor? Hope you all are doing well. Welcome to the stream. I hope you're enjoying yourselves and my slow, slow descent into insanity. Because all I want to do is bomb stuff. I can't say the other word because I think YouTube will demonetize me. But I want to bomb stuff. Bomb poop. I really want to take huge loads and drop them. Ugh. But GC No Taxi and GC Hold, those, those words are haunting me. We are... How many minutes into this trip? We are 50... Oh, thank God. Okay, it's counting down. 15.5. Magic numbers. They, they have appeared. They are now counting down. We have been streaming for close to an hour, and we have yet to kill something. My god. Oh, dude, yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah, Bobby. I am looking forward to those GB39s. I, I don't know if they're for sure coming or not, because I don't think they exist in DCS yet. And as far as I'm aware, Eagle Dynamics is in charge of weapons going forward. Because there was an issue with, I think, Heatler when they made the Phoenix. And um, they needed to relinquish uh, maintenance and create creation. Uh, well, I don't know what the right words is, but basically, after the results of the Phoenix missile from Heepler, Eagle Dynamics have said we are now in charge of weapons. So we are taking care of the Phoenix going forward, and all weapons going forward will be made by us. I'm looking forward to the better pods. Oh, dude, yes, I am tired. I'm so tired already of the 25,000 uh, ASL limit of the, the current, uh, what's it called? The current lantern pod on the Strike Eagle? That sniper pod, that thing is going to be intense. I want to be able to look through clouds. I want to look through buildings with that sniper pod. I want to look into the window of a building and see someone showering. That's how, and the... Things that were are not even modeled, I want to see happen. Five point one. 
I think they will do the GBU 39s. They could throw them on. Oh, that is true. It wouldn't be the first time something was developed from one module and made it its way to another. Because the APK dubs were um, made, I think, originally for the A10C2, and then the Harrier got them, so that was nice. GB54s and HMD coming to the Mud Hen 2. So, GB54s, yes, especially considering they already exist uh, in DCS. The, the Hemix, though, the, the HMD for the Mud Hen, I believe is still up in the air. I can't remember the last stance on that that Razbam had, but it had, oh, if I remember, it had something to do with like available public data, and they might be doing a lot of guesswork unless they get their hands on publicly available data that won't get them in trouble. You know, that's a good question. I don't actually know. Uh, it, they might be in the manual, but I don't know if they're in the game. And also, keep in mind, sometimes weapons are already in, like, the encyclopedia of DCS, like, in the in-game encyclopedia, which implies there are weapons in the game that are selectable. Uh, but they aren't- they may not necessarily be ready for use. Because, like, there's that 5,000 pound bomb for this Strike Eagle that you can actually use, but you can't choose it in the rearm menu. You have to play a specific mission that has it enabled. That's the only way you can use it right now, the 5,000 pound GBU. And thank God, this thing finished. Ah, okay. That's okay, that's okay. We'll, we'll keep this at 40. Jump in the back seat. Make sure everything is set up back here, because I can't remember everything I did. Okay. Before we go, let's double check what we have. We have iron bombs. Holy crap, that is not what I wanted. Uh, that was my original loadout. Let's go... CB97, CB97, load up on fuel. Okay. Formal take is already online. We're refueling. We're going to rearm with CB97s. leave this song on loop. I hope you guys don't mind. This is a great little chill song. <laughs> Glad to hear it. I'm sure the mix of smooth jazz and the sounds of the twos going off make for a great combination. Mixed in with AWACS callouts for stuff that are over a hundred nautical miles away. <laughs> yeah. Double eagle action. Strike eagle squared. Oh, yeah. What the hell? Our steer point is over a hundred nautical miles away. I don't remember that. Oh my god. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine, that's fine. Let's make sure everything is set up correctly. Yes, it is. Let's go to the armaments page. Air to ground, oh, air to ground load. Step, step, step. Mark a fours on the outside pylons and center. Step, step. I think I skipped over it. Yep, CBU 97 here and here. Go to ground. Let's do first program will be the CBU 97s because I'm going to use those to hit things, to hit units on the ground. Auto step height. Program two. Mark 84s. Those will also be set to step. So auto step and nose tail. And there you have it. All configured. Okay, uh, I think we're all set up back here, so let me get this guy, well first, let's get the teapot online. I'm 
interesting. I wonder if it's doing that because I rearmed. So let's do that. We'll give that a minute to to warm up. Okay. Wheel chocks. Remove. Remove the wheel chocks. Bops down. Take off trim. We are an hour in, and we are now taking off. To be fair, we did take off at least once before, but that was before the uh, server restarted. Um, I guess we're using either side of the active. I think this is technically the, the longer, longer way down the runway, so I'll probably go to the right. Okay, then parking brake off. Check a few last things. Just make sure everything is set. Power on, JT. Lights. Taxi lights. Okay. Everything back here. Let's turn target pod on. Laser on. Oops. One, six, eight, eight. Put the HUD on here. Okay, let's roll. Get out of here and kill some stuff. <laughs> I'm glad I could be of service. Get your differential math mathematical equations. I like the last bitch's position I left the pilot in. It just looks like he's staring right back at me into my soul. Look at that. Even in the side eye. Yo, mind your own business, and I'm flying. He's making sure I don't screw up while I try to take off this aircraft. He's just staring right in my soul. Uh-oh. Got bad news for you, buddy. I might crash and die on takeoff. Been lined up at the taxiway. This is runway O five. Might have to just do this from the front seat. I don't want to ruin the people's experience who are also playing on this server. My dog just woke up. Oh yeah, that's a good point. The Wizzo, the Wizzo mission in the uh, in the Super Hornet in Battlefield 3. I remember that mission. I was just talking about that the other day. We are mentioning how it was so hype when it first came out because we didn't know any better. We're like, oh man, this is a great experience. This is totally representative of what it's like to be a naval aviator in the backseat of a Super Hornet. Frickin' firing the guns, shooting missiles. Popping chaff and flares? Somehow managing to shoot down a flanker from our 2 o'clock or 8 o'clock or whatever? With our gun that's fixed forward facing? <laughs> uh, that was... that was something. Yeah, I'm just gonna take off. And full burn. Keep center line, keep center line as best we can. One, four. 
160. 180, pull back. Gear up, flaps up. Uh, let's fence in already because I won't have access to that once I hop in the back seat. Lights off. I think that's the last thing I need to do except switch to air to ground. There we go, that's what I need. All right, cool. So we'll continue a 10 degree nose climb. Activate the autopilot. Steering mode to waypoint two. Hell yeah. Oh, thank God, I didn't forget to turn that on. The safe down is the bigger problem? Yeah, I, I agree. In fact, I don't think I've bound wheel brakes for the back seat. I'm pretty sure I didn't, so that could be a bit of an issue. So I think for takeoff and landings, I should probably switch to the front seat now to think about it. Push uh, 253 because I'm pretty sure that's the tactical channel. Yes, it is. Auto pilot off. It's coming out of burn because we don't actually have that much fuel. Back on. Wow, look at these clouds. Jeez. You know, someone was mentioning in my comment section the other day that the... Someone was mentioning the other day in my comment section... Oh, that's just SA-10. It's way off of the distance, so it's fine. Uh, that the pixelation and the clouds on the horizon weren't as bad for them, and it was probably because I was playing in VR. But at default zoom level, you can see the pixelation in the clouds at the horizon level. That is so loud, Jesus. I forgot how loud that was. Shut it. Okay, not. I'm gonna turn that down. Unfortunately, that also turns down our AWACS, but it's not like I'm paying attention to them anyways. So instead, I will s cheat slightly and use the Haga Georgia at War website to give me a data link picture. Okay, we're at 30,000 feet. Let's go to level up. Set this to 80 miles so we can see steer point two, and we will offset ourselves from that. Do an altitude hold. Maintain about Mach 0.8 at 30,000 feet. That should be good enough. And we will push steer point two off to the left center of the of the uh, air to ground radar. Alrighty, let's level out. That should be good enough. And autopilot. First, we're going to trim and autopilot on. Fantastic. Got another strike eagle over there, ascending to the heavens. We're currently farting. Got another strike eagle over there, I'm sure. It's kind of funny. <laughs> I don't actually know if that's a strike eagle based on the pixel or anything. I, I'm just always assuming. Everything that I see out here contrailing is probably a strike eagle. Also, why is my pitch oscillating? I'm gonna hop in the front seat. What's going on here? All my stuff is configured appropriately. Let's see if it's my trim. 
think it might be my trim. There we go. Let's see if that's better. Autopilot on. Hopefully that's better. Okay. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and map this guy. Wow, I could already go to 4.7. Alright, let's do it. Hopefully that gives me a good view of the area I'm actually looking for. It's not actually at steer point two, it's close to it, but it's not at it. Um, and I think what we want is somewhere out here. Well, let's back that out to 10. Oh, the hype will prob we'll give it probably about a month, I would say. Maybe I'm being too generous. Uh, but I, I would give it about a month, personally. I mean, to be fair, I'm buying into the hype as well, but eh, it's all good. So I think what we want to hit... I mean, I could just make it easy on myself, because I know exactly where to look. Based on the F10 map. So this is the ridge that Steer Point 2 is on. This is the hill that the Apache would be looking down, so they would take off from this deer point and fire Hellfires down to here, I think. So let's do this. Let's see if we can't find our targets. Yeah, I think our targets are like right here somewhere. Let me rescan over here. So I recognize this road, this curve here. Currently 50 miles out. Not getting good returns in certain areas, which means it's pretty hilly. Got an ML2. Let's back out to 10 miles. You know what? I'm just gonna enter a steer point there. That'll make our lives easier. Because what we want is like right here somewhere. And I think what we're looking at you know what? I could be looking at this river, because those... I actually can't remember. Do... No, water would return zero returns, right? It would be blank like this. Overlord, Reacher 1-1, one, one, bogey dope. What? Bro, go to 134. 134. Or no, 136. Okay. Let's see where we are relative to this. We're coming at it from here, so it should be revealed pretty soon. Eh, let, let's just try finding it well, using just the radar, and if I struggle to find it further, then we'll switch over. But I'm pretty sure it's somewhere like in this general vicinity. In fact, it might be down here. further. I almost want to say that's it. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. And we're going to be losing our opportunity here in a second, so let me... Come left. That's strange. Okay, there we go. I was about to say, why is it climbing? Come out to 4.7. And then level out. Don't hurt me, please. Oh, wait, is this it? That might be it. Or is this it down here? Oh no, I can't tell. Or is this it? <laughs> uh, I 
Syracuse. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. This is for sure. So not this specifically, but, 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 but. I think there's something down here that we want. Because there's the curve in the red I was telling you about. Oh, jeez. Let's say eight. It just appeared, right? It's not locking me. Okay, I'm pretty sure if we go further this way, we will see what we care about. Here, maybe? So there's that... There's that little S curve in the road. And I wonder. You know what I could do is I could just drop down, use my targeting pod to get a visual ID on the area. And then pop back up based on that marker. You know what? That might be a good idea. Let's freeze that for now. In fact, let's uh, pop back out to 10. We'll set this guy to the T-Pod. Set this guy. Because the first thing we're going to use is probably the CB-97, so set this guy to the HUD. Okay. So let's disengage autopilot. We're currently 22 miles away from the target area. It's directly ahead of us, pretty much. I wish there was an uh, indicator on this heading tape of where the target is, left or right, but it doesn't show for whatever reason. And I think it's because it's out. It's technically out of the bounds of the um, of the heading of the uh, overlay of the HUD. So it's actually off the screen, which is why it's not showing. But, looks like we are flying with it off our 3 o'clock. So let's set this to steer point 2. Steer point 2. And we'll keep an eye on it while we descend. In fact, let's enter a left bank while we descend. Because we're going to be pretty freaking low because of these cloud layer. Because of this cloud layer, I should say. In fact, actually, I just got an idea. Let's pull up over here. I think what we can do is we can use one of these openings to get a peek at that area. Oh, you know what? That is only an opening because of oh no this is this is the opening we want to see so let's see if that is where the target is this targeting pod slewed over here. Oh my god, this is going to be so hard. Uh, let's go ahead and do... Okay, we've snow plowed the targeting pod, I believe. Now we have. Targeting pod is now snowplowed. What we're going to do is we're going to descend through this cloud. Oh, this is scary. Jeez. Now, what we want it should be visible 
over there somewhere. So I... I'm gonna steer towards waypoint two, steer point two, down this valley on the side. Oh, you know what? It's not visible because there's a little bend in the uh, in the route on the way there. That's what it was. We're gonna fly this way. Let's zoom in. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay, I remember now. This is pretty scary. I don't see anything yet. I don't see anything directly ahead. Let's go to the left. That's directly ahead. is the ground. You have to be careful. Unfortunately, I can't see designation points on the TSD. So I can't rely on that to tell me where what I'm looking for is. Oh, but I can rely on the air to ground radar. So if I'm remember this correctly though, our target should be directly ahead. Oh man, this cloud layer sucks. Yeah, there's no way. I don't think there's any way. We're gonna have to look for it using our radar. So let's turn away. This cloud layer is way too low. We're still good on fuel. So what we'll do is we'll extend back out. Climb back up to about 30,000 feet so we can get a good eye on the area again. And then get our scans in. In the meantime, while we climb, let's hit that autopilot. Getting hold. Keep an eye on our airspeed, making sure we don't drop too low. Let's just take a look at this radar map that we took earlier, because I still think what we want to hit is nearby. I'm going to switch the song to something else really quick. That is the same song. Jazz. Let's try this one. Wait, is that the same one? Oh, that's something else. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, I am on controller. And yeah, the music is a vibe for sure. Just chillin' like ice cream fillin'. Actually, because this teapot is going to be useless, I'm just going to switch my HUD to this. That way it's front and center. Then I'm going to put the twos on that so I can see what the hell is uh, pinging me. Yeah, 
Yeah, tell me about it. Yeah, I'm West Coast, so it's uh, it's already pushing it for most people. I started streaming at like 9 p.m. my time, which is 12 p.m. New York. Or sorry, 12 a.m. New York. Yeah, I'm definitely pushing it. down to right above five degrees. I do dislike how the radar altimeter is squished together. It threw together the 21 and the, uh, and the hundreds of feet together in one thing. Yeah, that's no bueno. How have you been finding the air-to-ground radar so far? I do enjoy it, as long as you know what you're looking for. If you don't know what you're looking for, it is incredibly difficult to find something. Uh, but since I know the general area of what I'm trying to find, it, where all that is, I'm sure I'm going to be able to spot it, I just need a point of reference. In fact, I'm just going to cheat. <laughs> I'm Well, not entirely cheat, I know generally where it's at. It's like, if you've got a briefing report and it told me the targets are in this area. So I'm just going to plop something down here. So 43-56-848. Let's also start leveling out and decreasing our speed. And altitude hold. Okay, let's go steer point seven. That doesn't exist, perfect. Steer point decimal seven. Shift north. Four three five six eight four seven four three five six eight four seven. Then four one zero eight seven five five. Sorry, I, I already forgot it. Four one zero eight seven five four four one zero eight seven five five. And then elevation thirty twenty. Okay, let's see how that does for us. Now we have a target point. And oh wow, I was a bit off. That's it right there. We're gonna have to do that one next. So I was getting there, I was close. I was just in the wrong general area. So that is where I need to be, I think. Pretty sure that's where I need to be. Was the objective you were hitting yesterday? Yes, it was. Uh, I was hitting this one yesterday while I was on the server. And I never got around to finishing it, I think. Like, I knocked out all the buildings, but I think there was still some ground units. And considering there's a thick cloud layer on Hoggett right now, this is like the perfect time to test the air-to-ground radar. Um, so, let's go ahead and start turning. And good, we're at 0.8 Mach, which is where I said I wanted to be last time. Not sure why the autopilot is trying to increase my altitude in a bank. That's kind of weird. And we are now officially counting down our pounds on this totalizer here, on this needle. So we'll have to keep an eye on that as we continue to search the area. The air-to-air uh, -air radar can be tough to utilize, especially with all the false returns, right? Those things are messing you up. Not to mention you have to make sure to always hit cool the left long to interrogate whatever you see on the radar. Yeah, it can be rough. And yeah, for sure, like I took no backs. Zero back. This is all weapons. And I'm still in the air. I mean, I guess I have been a little conservative on gas, but it's I just haven't really been thinking about it, really. I'm just sticking to the usual numbers I use, so 0.8 Mach for crews, and ingress to the target area. Okay. 
there's steer point two. That means our objective. In fact, let me um, do this. Yeah, there we go. That's what I want to see. Let's go ahead and start leveling out. Point eight mock is what we want still. I need that to stop oscillating. Thank you. Autopilot on. And let's go ahead and scan that area. Hopefully, that will give us our targets. Yeah, that is true. Ooh, I think that's it. I think that is it. I see those dots right there. Pretty sure those, those are the targets we want. Just need a better scan. Yeah, I'm pretty sure those are the targets we want. See how difficult that is to point out? Like, granted, they're out in the middle of nowhere, so it's actually easier to identify them from, like, cities like this. But they're, like, unless you... Oh, yeah, that is definitely... I can recognize... So this pattern I recognize. I can recognize these bunkers. I recognize these buildings. This thing on the right, I'm not sure what that is, but it is definitely recognizable, for sure. Also, what is going on? I can't... Okay, I have to be a little bit closer to zoom in further. That's okay, we'll wait. But yeah, it's right on the target we want, so that's good. You know what? I'm just not going to pay attention to this oscillation. As annoying as it is, I'm just not going to pay attention to it because it can't hurt me if I can't see it. Let's freeze that image for now, just in case we lose it for whatever reason. Come on. Give me the good to go. Oh, I just got it as I hit the button. Okay, let's do it. Thank God. And yet there are people who will air-to-air -air refuel like me. <laughs> okay, I'm pretty sure that is what we want. It is so difficult to see. It's so weird. It's like I was able to pick out individual targets from the bigger mapping. But now it's a little rough. But you can see how tall this building is because of the shadow it's casting from the radar. We'll freeze that. And let's go ahead and set our target here. And all we will do is drop CBU-97s like right around there. We'll drop it. Actually, remember right, there was targets here. So let me drop it from here. And we'll drop two with a spacing of, let's say, 350, I guess. So we'll do, instead of sep, whip single, drop two with an interval of, let's go 300, of 300, and see how that goes. And we're already flying in the correct line of sight relative to the target, so I will just simply turn in. I want the CBUs to go across the buildings. So as long as I line up with the ASL as it is already, we should be okay. Time to release is 3 minutes 30 seconds. Not bad. Yeah, that should be a good release. Assuming the line of sight is correct. Alright, let's see how this goes. And I think we'll do a little bit of cheating and use F6 to view the results of our bombing run because it'll be as if we have like JTAC or something in the area observing for us. If we want to like, <laughs> if we want to give reason to believe ourselves.
but we're also doing this from 30,000 feet, so it may not actually be that accurate. two minutes and unfortunately there is if I remember correctly an SA-15 out there somewhere but I do need to be careful and keep in mind or keep an eye on our twos just in case twos is it twos or twos I'll just redesignate just in case it lost it for whatever reason seconds. SA-8 OSA, SA-6, but that's further away. Another SA-8 OSA, it could be the same one for all I know. Less than a minute to release. Eight and a half mock. Point eight and a half, I should say. Slow it down a little bit. Because we want the release to be as close to zero gain speed as possible. Like just no positive rate, no negative rate. Just stay the same speed as much as we can. 30 seconds. seconds. Holding pickle. Watch, I didn't have a bound. <laughs> Correct off a little bit. And there it is. Let's enter a left-hand bank. And engage autopilots. Oop. Don't yank the stick too hard. We got this. We got this. Simply do that, and let's see how these bombs go. If we, if our line of sight was true, the, these two bombs should fall across the buildings, not along them, and hopefully hit some targets. Oh, those things were supersonic. Wait. Did that just hit the ground? Also, where the hell are we? This is nowhere I thought we were. Did that just fall into the ground? Oh. so confused. Hold on. Are we alive? Yes, we are. This is nowhere I thought we were. I mean, there's targets here, but these weren't the targets I was thinking about. What is going on? Also, why did my CPUs not release? Is it because I released them from so high up? Got an SA-8 OSA. so confused. Those are not the targets I was thinking of. I'm very confused. I guess these are that blob that I was thinking about. We got a SA-9 here. Did they change the layout of this target area? Here 
steers this guy. It's a steer point. This is Farp Alpha, which is exactly what I was expecting. I, I am honestly surprised that SA Osa isn't engaging me yet. So let me um, just turn, keep on turning away this way. So I'm gonna lighten my, my bank angle a little bit. Increase my altitude. Turn off altitude hold and just have it do attitude hold. While I continue to increase altitude as well as speed. Okay, I am so confused. It's very interesting that I found targets that are very unlike what I was expecting, but in the area I expected. That is strange. Very strange. Is the SA Rosa? No, the SA that is the SA fifteen. I was thinking of as well. Look. And this is the Tunguska. Go figure. That's the Tunguska. I'm thinking of the right area. But where are the targets I normally hit? I was expecting to find a factory and a workshop, like the tech combine looking thing. But they aren't here. That is so strange. Well, whatever. Alright, well, let's uh, let's see how the iron bombs do with that. I'm going to designate just a little bit before. I'm going to switch off from the CB-97s, because apparently they're unreliable. And we're going to target this guy. In fact, let's just put it on it. And supposedly... A shallow, like a very shallow dive will help make an auto drop more accurate. Let's not forget nose tail. And yeah, let's just see how it goes. In fact, let's only drop the center line because I don't want to risk getting off center with this or becoming uh, asymmetrical with this. Guy flying the F F-15 Charlie or Chad. <laughs> That's funny. So my approach to this target shouldn't really matter anymore, just because I'm aiming for the one spot. So uh, casting multiple munitions across a certain direction doesn't matter as much. But all I will do is simply go straight to the target and drop from apparently 30,000 feet. This may not work out well, but whatever, it's all an experiment. The CB-97s let us down, which is kind of unfortunate. To continue climbing again. There we go. There's our target. What's up, Aqua? How's it going? Long time no see, buddy. How have you been? Time to release. 50 seconds. The chances of success is uh, very low, but by shallow dive, what I'll probably do is enter probably a five degree dive to see if it makes a difference. And in theory, it should hit right smack in the middle of those tanks, the, the water tower looking things. So I'm going to start diving once I see the drop line at the top, and by diving again, only five degree. And hopefully, that is good enough. Well, good morning. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing good, just doing a late stream. There's the uh, there's a drop queue, so I'm going to descend. Power down. Five degree drop, and holding pickle. And coming back up. Power on, climbing back up through 30,000. Continuing our left hand bank. The autopilot. Oh, it's still off. Okay, or it did turn off. Okay, cool. So let's um, engage the autopilot while we hold this angle and watch our bomb drop and see where it drops. Fingers crossed, guys. It does not have JDAMs, unfortunately. Uh, there is. There is, in fact, a canopy control lever in the Wizard Seat. Still went long. That 
socks. What? Excuse you? Oh, it's over here. What the heck was I targeting? Well, apparently I damaged the Shilka because he's moving. What was I targeting? Was I targeting these things? That's actually kind of nuts if that's what I was actually targeting. That's so weird. I mean, that was pretty close, all things considered. I mean, it's just an iron bomb. It's not laser guided or anything. Oh my god, this is rough. All right, let's uh, let's descend down to uh, twenty-five thousand. Hopefully, that's not within range of those SA dosos. Probably will be with our luck. And worst case scenario, we can shift over to the coast and try to take uh, Sochi instead. Okay, we're at twenty-five thousand, pretty much. We've descended below 25,000. Let's pull back up. And continue turning, continue turning. It's okay. Continue turning. Keep turning. We zoom in on the TSD. There's our target. Oh, time to release is not giving me a bar. That's okay. We will ascend back out. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna have to extend out a little bit. We, we turned in a bit too early. Don't forget to drop like a like for the algorithm, boy. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm not saying it, but VZ, you make a fantastic point. I'm not saying it though, but if you read what VZ just said, please consider whatever VZ just said. It will help a lot, it will go a long ways. Because I am ultimately failing pretty hard. That, oh, you know what? That is probably the hangar, now that I think about it. That is likely the hangar. And the, are they down here? Is that what the, is that what this little speck is up here? I swear, those look like three tanks. Do those not look like three cylindrical tanks right next to each other? Oh, you know what? Here's a little trick that I learned. Uh, so, in fact, let me engage autopilot. So here's a little trick I learned. If you want, like, this is currently the highest zoom you can get on the air-to-ground radar, right? But if you press and hold half trigger and then press TDC depress, you can zoom in further. <laughs> oh, look at that. And now you can pick a very specific pixel you want to designate as a target. And honestly, this now is starting to honestly look like a hanger. <laughs> so I'm going to leave that designated. And we'll try to actually... The problem is we're going to have to extend out to like 30 miles if we want another uh, air-to-ground map of the area. So, we can either go in for another hit on this guy, but at 25,000 instead. Oh, you know what we could do? Oh, that is going to be dangerous. That is going to be dangerous, but I kind of want to do it. Oh, that is going to be so dangerous. Um, do, 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 here we go. Mark fours. Oh, that would explain why I had no ASL. I didn't have them selected. So, we're going to go C dip. We're gonna go ripple single quantity times two. No interval. We're gonna try to bomb the crap out of that with CCIP. That's gonna be interesting. But that also means we need a lot of altitude. So I'm gonna disengage autopilot. We're gonna climb while turning. And we'll head back to the target, uh, the target area. We're gonna try to do a C-dip release on that point. It's going to have to be a very, very steep dive. Because I need to release those bombs ASAP. And then climb back out. Oh, It's going to be rough. Oh, and if I play my cards right, oh, this is going to be weird. Okay, actually, let me go program 2. CBU. <laughs> CBUs. Right. No, C. 
step. Purple multiple. No. Right. Purple single. How many do I have left? I only want, I have four left. Okay, so. Purple single height with interval of, let's say, 100 feet. And if I play my cards right, I'll be able to do that right after, because those are technically higher drag. So let's go program two. Oh, this is going to be so weird. And we're not going to pay attention to the twos. Alright, so the way I see this is with the target area inside, we will head straight to the target, and once we're within about 10 miles, we'll start diving. We'll do a C dip release right on the target area, then as then once we drop it, we're gonna hit program three. Then as we're pulling up, we will then continue to hold weapon release. And here, in theory, because they're higher drag, we'll eventually drop the remainder of our actually we need four. The remainder of our CBU 97s. Oh, you know what? Let's make this multiple. Multiple release. It'll be times two with 100 feet separation, so that way there's two at a time, 100 feet apart. And we're gonna go all the way to 40,000 feet before we, <laughs> before we, oh, before we initiate a dive. Holy crap. Oh my god, this, this is gonna be like the world's longest dive bomb. I mean, hell, if it puts it on target, right, we might destroy that bunker. In fact, let's, uh, okay, fantastic. We are looking right at it in F11 view, so we'll see how that turns out. Alright, we're at 40,000 feet, so let's level out. Going straight towards the target. We'll maintain our full afterburner as we approach it, then we'll cut it before we hit the dive. So at about 12 miles, we'll cut our engines, then at 10 miles, we'll dive. Scary, the AI. Twelve miles cutting engines. Let me get this ready. Dive. There it is. 35 degree dive, just like I planned. Oh, my heart is racing. Oh no, we're being launched on. Come on, we could do it, we could do it, we could do it, we could do it. Let's put the pepper on the thing. Here's the release. No! We got the release at least. Okay, we're, we are officially dead, but... But we got the bombs off. SA-15 got us. Well, let's see how accurate that really was. Oh, that's looking good. Oh, that's looking good. Oh! You... You... No! Oh. Oh, God. Are you freaking kidding me? There? There? Target! <laughs> oh my God! gotta be kidding me, dude. Literally. All- <laughs> You can even see my previous drop over here. And this basically confirms we were in fact looking at the hangar, but still. You can see my first drop here. This was a CCRP. It wasn't that far off, but it was pretty close. I can't believe this, though. Literally. 
literally around it hit around the target. That's gonna leave a. Oh my god. Oh my god. Please. I almost want to. Can I not? Can I not? Can I? Can I please? Oh god, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> what are you? What are you doing? What is this? Are you, are you hitting a SA-15 or are you hitting one of ours? I swear. I sw Maverick? 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 Were you the one that launched that? Yes, you are. Where is this going? I'm angry. Sorry. I, I have to pick on someone. I have to pick on someone because I can't pick on myself because that would just be self-mutilation. Where is this going? If he launched this... I mean, it's heading in the right direction of that SA-15, but I feel like it's going to go past the SA-15 and then hit one of our NASAMs. Friendly NASAMs. Any bets, guys? Cast your bets. Cast your bets. Is it going to be the SA-15? Is it going to be the SA-8? Whoa! Jesus. Well, definitely not the SA-15, because that's it right there. It's out in the open. Is opening up, but the other layer is so low. <laughs> I don't know if I can do anything about it. Well, anyways, so if you cast your bets, well, you've already lost because this is about to hit friendly Nasams <laughs> through the clouds, potentially through the terrain, because I don't think he gave it enough height. Anyways, I'm gonna be very surprised. If this actually makes it. Still though, still though. I was going for our friendly Hawk. Oh, it's not even a Nasam. Oh, it, it's a mix. So that's Nasam and Hawk Sight. Great job, dude. Good job. Anyways. Should I go up one more time or am I gonna call it? Because that is two hours into the stream. Granted, it took. No, I'm gonna go up again. I'm gonna go up again because it took a whole hour for me to get airborne in the first place. So, I can potentially take out that SA-15. In fact, what we are going to test and see how well this works out. I want to test... Will that work, actually? I think about it. I need a, I need a latitude-longitude converter. I need to convert... PCS world dot pro, I think. Yeah, thank you. Chords converter. So there's this website called DCS world dot pro that has a bunch of useful little tools. Maybe our very good guy. And one of those tools is a coordinate converter. Which I can show you what I'm talking about. Maybe I can. showing my display. So let's try changing this that. There we go. That should show. Okay, so this is the coordinate converter. Right? You can enter in whatever coordinates you want and it will convert to whatever you desire. So, like in this case, lat long. So I'm going to call this just waypoint one. And I'm going to Going to enter in some coordinates, so like 435607.70. Uh, in fact, do I have to put the. I mean, I, I could just do that and then that. 
Will it accept that? I don't know. Use negative. Oh, it's saying spaces. So let's put a space instead. And then for west, south or west, it's negative. So we don't care. Right here, we'll do. Wonder if it needs a leading zero. Let's try. Let's just try four zero oh nine five one point two two. And then I want, I think, decimal minutes, seconds. Well, that'll give me everything, so let's just do that. Okay, cool. So we got this. So let's go back to DCS, and we'll add. Those coordinates. Okay, so in theory, the coordinate that I just entered is that SA15. In theory. Actually, is it? Yes. In theory, that is the SA15 tour. So what I'm going to do is strike that target with the exact coordinates and pray that is in fact where that SA15 is located. And that will be it for the night. This is a very, very specific mission, not of revenge, mind you. This isn't about revenge. This has little to do with revenge. This is simply carrying out a mission that has been assigned to me by me for me. That also happens to involve a particular Sam that ended my previous life. No coincidence, mind you. Or purely coincidence, mind you. Nothing else is the motivation. Engine start. I swear to God, if I die again, <laughs> I mean, I, I might, I probably will, to be honest. What my plan is, is to fly low, fly fast, and hit him hard. I wonder if there's a max engagement height, or max, max release height of CBU-97s. I wonder if that's the reason why it didn't work. So if I stay low, it should work, right? Of course, there's no guarantee I'll stay alive because the SF-15 is up on a hill slightly. Left engine start, or rather to idle. Two's T-Pod, to air, air to ground. Let's change the music back to the previous song because this is getting repetitive. Frog, ESD, twos, air to air, air to ground. Okay, let's go that, that, cycle it. All right. Brake is on. GC no taxi, that looks good. We'll set this to nav, just in case that does in fact increase our chances of getting a good align. You know what, I'm just gonna turn the radar on, I don't care. You know what, I'm just gonna keep the lights off, I don't care. Okay, now let's get everything in the back set up. Oxygen, lights. Or internal lights, I mean. RWR, countermeasures, radios. Radio, turn up. Backup ADI, injection seat, pod. Actually, that stays off because we haven't actually armed up yet. Mic on. 
Or am I just crashing in peril? Yeah, that is true, actually. I wouldn't put it past me. But in theory, the Navflir pod should actually highlight things like power lines very well. I might try that. That. Turning pod, air to ground radar. Okay, everything back here is pretty much set except for the teapot, but that's because it's not armed yet. Or it's not on the plane yet. Ride the ground crew. <laughs> I mean, technically, I think weight on wheels disables the radar, so it shouldn't be an issue, but in the event that it happens to not kick, you know, like, keep it off, yeah, we'll, we'll make people uh, unintentionally, oh, what's the word? They will not be able to reproduce anymore. Well, let's just put it that way. There may be other things. They might have to eat out of a straw for a while. Turn off that, or turn the conformal tanks back on. GC, hold! God, you're always asking for PP. Like, come on. Four, five, oh, two. Five, four, two. Easting, zero. 3908. Six zero. Okay, hopefully that's good enough. You see no taxi, we'll just wait for that. Change our channel to something else like C8. And in the meantime, I'm going to download a different song. Add a third one to the mix instead of just two. Usually any of these jazzy ones are pretty good. Look bag. What do I have so far? I have Yeah, book bag, the thought of you. I'm gonna pause that and let's take a listen to some of these songs and see which ones we like. Smokey's Lounge, let's hear this one. a little fast. Oh god, that's elevator music. Nope, 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 nope. Lazy walk? <laughs> what did I use? I used this one for my uh, VR helicopter video, my Apache VR video. No, let's move on. And I could just play it from this website. I think about it. Okay, good, it's counting down. Let's try this one. No, that is more of the same. Bet on it. Oh, I used this one for another video as well, I forgot what it was. Oh, I know what I use this one for. This is for my gamepad review video. Oh yeah. Let's try Sunday Stroll. Let's do that one. All right, we're almost aligned. Gamepad is alive still, that's good. So I might, should I do this next one in from the front seat? No, I should still stick to the back seat, but we're definitely gonna turn on the nav flare. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know that much about jazz. All I know is that it makes me feel better about my life. Especially after getting annihilated out of the air and freaking missing a target from the front and back. <laughs> hitting the front and back of the target I was hitting. <sighs> I still can't believe it. I still can't believe it. I forgot all about it until literally just now. I forgot I, how, I, how badly I missed that target. Oh my god. Okay. Anyways. <sighs> Let's get our weapons online. Or on the plane. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. We will not take anything except... <laughs> oh my god. Let's see if this works. Oh, I really hope this works. Oh my god. It all depends on those coordinates, and I really hope those coordinates are going to be accurate. So we don't need a... So we need a nav flare. We need a target pod just to keep ourselves evened out. And we're going to take... Times six... Times six... CB-97s. Total of twelve. Total of twelve CB-97s. Total of 13. CB-97s. I might crash the server. So let's not- let's bring that down, because I- I like these people. I'm gonna bring that down to a total of... Three, six, seven. Lucky number seven. Perfect. Think of it that way. Lucky number seven. Yeah, that is true, because imagine this cloud layer plus it being in the evening. Oh my god. I would just quit. I would just give up already. Oh right, uh, so while that's loaded up, so loading up, let's go ahead and go here. Target point number seven. We'll enter in those coordinates and see how accurate those coordinates are, because I'm pretty sure I'm going to die. Uh, so we'll have to see the progress, or just how it turns out via F11. Okay. I think I've got the exact coordinates of that target now. So let's go north. Four, three, five, six. One. Two, eight. Perfect. Shift east. Zero. Four, one. Oh, nine. Eight, five, four. Eight, five, four. Oh, no. I don't have an altitude. Um, crapola. Crapola on a stick. Um, I'm pretty sure it's like right here somewhere. Oh, in fact. Four, three, five, six, one, two, eight. Four, three. Five, six, one, two, eight, and then four, one, oh, nine, four, one, oh, nine. Eight, five, four. So if I'm correct, one, two, eight. like literally right here. If those coordinates are correct, it'll be right here. <laughs> wow, that is exceptional. Holy smokes. Okay, cool. Those are those are the right coordinates. All right, so 3102 is our altitude. 3102. Oh my god. I did not expect those coordinates to work out that way. All right, cool. We got this. We've got this, boys. And I think I know how I'm going to approach this. I'm going to approach it from steer point two along the hill. Use that for cover on the way in. Just stay low, stay fast. And that should give me enough time to get the bombs off before I get shot down. Because I'm going into this assuming that I'm going to die. Okay, here we go. So let's load up 
power program, armaments, air to ground load, step, step, CV-97s. That tour is going to die. These are all going to be along its path. Yes, that is going to happen. Appear to ground. It's overkill, but whatever. Uh, ripple, single, three, six, seven. So you know what? Let's do, um... The smart thing is to do a ripple multiple. Two at a time. With an interval of 50 feet in between each drop. So this little two will drop at, at zero feet. Another two at 50 feet. And then another two at 100 feet. Or another one at 100 feet. Or whatever. You, you know what I'm trying to say. So that should be good enough to cover the general area, as long as the lineup is accurate. So that'll be my drop. I don't have to look at this anymore. That'll be good to go for when I get there. Um, let's go to air to ground. Okay, let's do it. Let's uh, make the magic happen and call it a night. Go ahead and place your bets, place your bets, see if two loss dies midway through the flight because of a random SC-25T he didn't see coming and gets a AIM-9, well, AIM-9, R-60M shoved up his tailpipe. Oh, sorry, hold up, hold up, sorry. Let's turn that down. Oh, it switched to a different song, that's why, god damn it. It's just going down the list. There we go. Oh, you know what I could do? I can't play a license song. I need to be careful not to do that. Okay. I have an idea, and I'll save it for later. But it should work out. I just need to find that stupid song. Where the heck is that stupid song? Oh, there it is. Found it. Okay, we're good to go. All right, so. One jazz playlist review. Eh, not anytime soon. Don't hold your breath. All right, wheel chocks are off. Weapons are on. Uh, nav Fleer is online. Let's make sure it's actually working. Turn the brightness up. Turn the contrast up. There we go. Looks good. That looks... Off. Is that because of the parallax? Shoot. Uh, stand by. I know there was a solution for this. I just don't remember what it was. I need to look it up really quickly because that Nafler is going to come in handy, I'm sure. Okay, enter 61 into the boresight value. What is the boresight value? 61 in the boresight, so I have to go to menu. Very menu. No, data. Where the heck is it? I remember it was here somewhere. Tacon, IFF, terrain follow here at Nafleer. So confused. Oh, boresight, boresight, here we go. Um. What did I say again? 61. 
61. Let's see if that aligns it. Oh. Maybe it's pitch. Hell yeah. Okay, so if you find that your Nafleer is off-center, like it's too far down or whatever, go to Menu, go to Nafleer Boresight, go to Boresight, and then for Pitch, add 61, and that'll align it all up again. Thank God. Um, I would say wait till you're happy with the weapons that it has available. It is, I mean, I personally would still pick it up. I would still pick it up myself, but I do admit that it is lacking in terms of um, weaponry and certain uh, features. Like basic stuff like laser code customization because we're currently stuck on 1688. There's a lot of desync issues in multi-crew. There's a lot of issues that need to be ironed out. So if you want to wait for a sale, then yeah, then wait. But if you fully expect yourself to pay full price no matter what anyways, then you could get it now, get it later, it doesn't matter. Uh, what really matters is how long are you willing to wait? Because the whole point of waiting is to see if things get ironed out, which they will, it'll just take time. Uh, but unless a sale is around the, is around the corner for this specific module, there's no point really in waiting. In my opinion, but that is for you to decide. Okay, that will come on. Okay, so I do have to take off from the front seat because I don't have brakes otherwise. So we will fly to steer point two. We will fly over steer point two from the north towards the target and then drop as fast as we can. That is the game plan here. Yeah, JDAMs are gonna be a huge thing in the in the Strike Eagle. That's definitely something, if there was something worth waiting for, that'd be among them. There's also gonna be JSOWs, apparently. I didn't realize that, but apparently there is. And maybe, maybe one day someone mentioned the GBU-39, which is the small, I think it's the GBU-39, the small diameter glide bombs. Those will be pretty sweet as well. Turn down the contrast so I can actually see the nav flare showing. I should turn that off for now. I'm waiting for terrain avoidance. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Oh, did the uh, I did actually didn't realize did the F-111 actually have a terrain uh, clearance radar, terrain following radar? And what's actually pretty cool is that the the A4EC, the community-made A4 uh, scooter. For DCS, that actually has a terrain clearance radar as well. And it actually works. It's actually pretty neat. It takes a bit to, like, uh, understand the hieroglyphics that are being presented to you, but once you understand it, it's pretty cool. And it's pretty cool to uh, to see yourself or <laughs> that you're still alive despite flying through a valley at night, for example. Or in the middle of a cloud. It's It's pretty cool. Okay, so before I forget, let's double check. Yep, no one has taken off. Is anyone landing? No one's landing. Someone just took off, so we'll go ahead and take it. Also, we need to do that. Take off trim, as well as laps down. That is nuts. Do you know if the uh, F-15 is going to have the same feature once it gets its radar? Basically flying itself through a valley or something? I am totally down for stuff that makes me do less. I love being lazy. I mean, I say that and yet I'm playing with an Xbox controller, but trust me, I love being lazy. I 
120, 140, 160, 180, and pull. Control the rate of descent. Gear up, flaps up. Trim out for a 10 degree nose up. And continue to waypoint. Seven, I guess. Okay, let's switch to the back seat. Oh, actually, no, not yet. We need to master arm on. Radar's already on, lights are off. Okay, we're good to go. turn our radar altimeter on on the HUD, even if we're not really using the HUD. Let's change that. Camera is on. Extend that out so we can see steer point number two, because that's where we're going. Ooh, in fact, I just got an idea. Let's do that, let's do that. And then this guy needs to snap over. There we go. And then zoom in. There's the pie. Continue our climb up to 30,000 feet. We'll map the area. Because what I want to do is I actually want to map out these two points, and then align myself so that I drop the bomb in a direct line from steer point two to the target. I'm pretty sure that'll give me the best chance at hitting it. In fact, it might be better to do it over here somewhere. Based on the shadows. Now, I'll stick with the original plan. So we'll do that. And we'll keep just scanning this area. Yeah, that'll work. In fact, we can actually just leave it at that. So let's freeze that. Set the target point. Oh, no. No, no, I don't want to set the target point there. I'll leave the target point there. In fact, let's get out of this. Jesus, I was about to ruin that for myself. Um, and yeah, so we'll just continue flying over to the target area. That screenshot of the terrain avoidance page on the manual has hard next to one of the... There was soft, medium, hard, rotary knob, that... Interesting. Okay. <laughs> hey, you know me. I just like to be able to pick up and play DCS no matter where I'm at. I could theoretically be doing this at like a coffee shop or something because all I need is my Xbox controller, right? So what I'm looking for is for this stick to be lined up with steer point two, but in the opposing direction. I was hoping to put the target designation down here. Ooh. Oh no, that's not gonna work. Dang it. Okay, uh, I'll have to like eyeball it. But basically I wanna fly over steer point two towards the target and use the cover of this hill until I'm ready to drop to give me as much time as I, I can get before reaching the target. Oh, this is gonna be rough. But we got this. We got this, boys. <laughs> yep. I'll just attach a GoPro to my neck and record me playing at a Starbucks or something. Laptop out, Xbox controller out front, sipping my coffee, go in for an air-to-air -air refuel, refuel from the tanker and drink from my cup of coffee at the same time. Refueling twice is very nice. Oh. You see me sitting in my chair upside down on my head, just drinking. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. Oh, before I forget. Time to target is uh, seven minutes, apparently. That is a long time.
Still waiting for this thing to line up. We're going to hit the afterburner because we don't need that much fuel. Let's set this to the target, just to see if it shows up. And <laughs> recreate the PFB. <laughs> oh, upside down AR, yeah, that's true. You know, that's actually a lot harder to do nowadays because they, uh, they made the engine quit a lot faster than it used to in the in the Harrier, just because uh, it was actually able to accelerate while inverted, even though the engine was idle. Uh, all, all you needed was like I don't know, like one degree nose down, and it would accelerate. They since fixed it so it can't accelerate in an inverted uh, flight anymore, which means you need engine power, which means it quits faster when inverted. So that sucks. It is what it is. It had to be done, I guess. Okay, this is looking pretty good so far. If you follow the line, it's right around here right now. So we need it to be a little more to the right. Then we'll be able to uh, turn in. How much fuel it can carry? I think up to 35,000 pounds of fuel, if I remember right. Because two bags gives me 30,000 total, and I think each bag gives 5,000 pounds of fuel, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so yeah, that is roughly how much it carries. Does that look lined up to you? That looks lined up to me. That's getting there. That's pretty close. That's pretty close. Just a little more, just a little more. Okay, time to target four minutes. And time to release, release 3 minutes 40 seconds. Okay, let's turn in. That looks pretty good. And we'll go in at a, roughly the cloud layer. I think we're at the second... No, we're at the first cloud layer, actually. There's the target. Let's just make sure our arming page is set up. Yes, it is. Okay. Now let's go to HUD, NAV. Okay, well, that doesn't help. So we're going to have to stay above the clouds, unfortunately. Hopefully this gives us all the time we need to hit the target. And at 6,000 feet, it should have no problem dropping the CBUs on target. Just gonna go full burn all the way there. In fact, we don't need this anymore. Let's put the HUD here. Put the armament page here. This is all we're looking at. Put the TUs here. I mean, we already know we're going to die. Warning, fuel low. Warning, fuel low. Oh, so it said warning fuel low because I was in afterburner for too long. And the feed tank can only keep up for so long. So if you afterburn for so long that the feed tank runs dry, your engines will flame out. So you have to not be in afterburner for too long, especially down low. So that's a little something to keep in mind. Actually, you know what? I don't need this. I already know I'm going to die, so let's switch over to the TSD and just keep an eye on what we're flying over. Alright boys, time for some music.
Let me know if that's too loud. There we go, it's about 50%. And we're gonna punch it. Full burn. Bring down that time to release. We're at 700 feet, radar altimeter, 500, and increase our altitude just in case. Okay, stay above the clouds because that's pretty dangerous. Thirty seconds to, to release. We just passed over the hill. There's the hill. We dive down because this is the highest point we're ever going to deal with, so we can actually dive down below the clouds if we wanted. Please let me murder you. Let me murder you, please. There's the bomb fall line. Release. We're out. 11 left one CBU-97. Hell yeah! We have avenged ourselves. Look at that. Perfect. Jesus, thank God. That actually went according to plan. I am satisfied. Alright, so with that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and just jettison everything. Get rid of that last CBU because we don't need it. And we're just going to head home because I am tired, it is late. And I just want to go land this plane in victory, knowing that we killed literally a single tour this whole goddamn mission. This whole goddamn stream. <laughs> but we got our revenge, that's all that matters. We planned out a target, we hit it, and we're going home. In fact, let's actually divert to Mazdoc instead, because I'm pretty sure that's closer. We'll just go there. Ooh, in fact, I can show you one of the one of the neat things about this plane. So if we switch to air-to-ground mode, use the air-to-ground radar, unfreeze the page. Wait, auto-freeze? What? No. There we go. Oop, oop, that is not... I'm so used to the backseat right now. Stand by... Almost destroyed my plane there. And then reduce the range to cover just that airfield. So, even if even though the airfield is covered in, in uh what's called in clouds, we can scan it, see the airfield, and then plan out our landing on the runway. Because of that line of that line of sight stick. So there's the airfield. You can zoom in further. In fact, let's do that. Oh, I swear to God. <sighs> my game crashed. <laughs> oh my God. <gasps> okay. Anyways, guys. Uh... God.
Anyways, guys. I'd like to say thank you all for stopping by. It was a pleasant experience, this whole stream. I enjoyed your company. Thank you for coming along with me on this amazing adventure. But that will be it for me tonight. It is late. I'm tired. And that... I will consider mission success. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, enjoy this content for whatever reason, please make sure you hit that like, hit that subscribe, hit that whatever it is YouTube is asking you to do nowadays. And please, tune in next time for some more DCS World gameplay. Or live streams or whatever. Take care, guys. Have a good day.